Hi, everyone. This is Talking Digital Industries, the podcast for technologies and trends that drive industrial enterprises. I'm your host, Alex Chavez. This episode is a deep dive into programmable logic controllers, or PLCs, which are at the heart of machines and factory automation systems. In fact, manufacturers from all sectors use this technology to automate a variety of industrial processes. Today's PLCs have the same functionality and simplicity that originally made them so popular with manufacturers when they were released more than 60 years ago. However, as we know, in technology, time never stands still. And thanks to continued advancement in processor and memory technology, PLCs have shrunk in size while growing in power and speed. Now, to this episode today, we're going to look at the further evolution of this classic hardware product in an increasingly digitalized industry. And the question I want to answer here is, will PLCs go virtual? And if so, what would be the advantages? And how would this fit in an environment with more and more software-defined automation? Now, if anyone can answer that question, it's my two guests today. I am joined by Efrosini Tsuchnika. She is responsible for the control business here at Siemens. And also with me is Oliver Narr. He is driving virtual control topics also here at Siemens. Welcome to both of you. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Alex. PLCs are typically small gray boxes, and they're actually quite inconspicuous. But for you, Efrosini and Oliver, they've become part of your everyday work here at Siemens. And so my first question to each of you, if you could think back, what is your first encounter with a PLC? Efrosini, would you like to go first? Yes, thank you, Alex. My first encounter with PLCs was in Milan, in Italy. I was leading a big European-wide project and um, we were hosted by the water distribution company of Milan. And, you know, Milan is quite a big city, uh, 1.3 million inhabitants. And this water distribution company is responsible for bringing drinking water to every inhabitant. So the network consists of more than 2,000 kilometers of pipes. They have almost 30 pumping stations and 400 wells in the greater area of Milan. Every year they are pumping more than 220 million cubic meters of water. And it's very, very impressive. So we, uh, within the project, were visiting one of these pumping stations. So a pumping station is typically located close to a well, and its function is to pump the water into the distribution network. These pumps are driven by electric motors, and the electric motors are controlled by these small gray boxes, the PLCs. And it was very, very impressive because you see this huge city, you see the complexity of the network, and then you see these tiny boxes that have all the power within them. Doing all of the work. For you, Oliver, what was your first encounter with PLCs? I remember it as if it were yesterday. I guess I was something around 12 years old. So my family just received the first PC. I just started doing basic programming. So I was really into this technology at that point of time. And my father was responsible for the maintenance in one of the biggest lumber mills in Europe. If I visited him at work, I usually did a kind of a yeah, short journey through the lumber mill. And there was always a chance to see how these logs were cut into lumber and everything worked with such precise movement and everything worked very well together. And when I asked my dad how this has been done, he showed me these gray boxes with these green lights on it. Yeah. And there was a brand written on it. It was Siemens. And uh, this was my first contact with the PLC yeah, to really see how these things happen. And here you are at Siemens. <laughs> it was meant to be. <laughs> yeah, it looks like. So those are great stories. You know, from water distribution to a lumber mill, it really shows the the range of industries where PLCs are a part of everyday life. And when I was getting ready for this podcast, I came across car washes, elevators, uh, road traffic systems, even roller coasters. It's really amazing where PLCs are integrated 
and you really see how valuable they are for industry and all sectors, actually. That's right. You cannot imagine industrial production without PLCs. So if I think of the big topics of our time, they are all connected to PLCs. So think about green farming, sustainable production of food. You need PLCs. Think about waste recovery. You need PLCs. Think about our big sustainability activities we have as a society, making our lives more sustainable, energy generation, solar panels and battery production for anything in particular for electric cars, charging stations for electric cars, um, the production of electric cars, all these productions need PLCs. And also thinking of pharmaceutical, any new vaccines, medication, lot size one production, patient specific production needs PLCs. I'd like to bring in another current topic, and that's, of course, digitalization. Some of the buzzwords there are digital twins, data analysis, edge computing. But there's one term that hardly ever seems to come up or often isn't addressed in this conversation, and that's hardware PLCs. So does that mean they're being bypassed by digitalization? No, I don't think so. I think it's rather the opposite. The PLC has basically started digitalization in the factory. So we didn't use these kind of direct wires anymore, but generic programming, um, something you can easily adapt, something that you can also use like real world, for example, with letter diagrams, but now as a kind of a program language for the PLC. So this is really the core, which started years ago when it comes to digitalization in the factory. And actually at the same time, these virtualization topics, like for example, I have a complete software in the loop testing, also were definitely part of the PLC landscape as we see it today. And also kind of yeah, data integration, for example, with cloud applications, I use the data out of the PLC. This is what we see right now. And yes, for me, it's really the core of digitalization in the factory. I guess you could say when you're thinking about PLCs, they are everywhere in our physical environment, but they are also everywhere in this virtual environment too. As well. It's the foundation uh, also for the virtual world. Keyword virtual brings me to my next question. What about a virtual PLC? Do we need it? And if so, what would be the advantages? I mean, if we today talk about digitalization, there's one big trend. This is this IT and OT integration, right? So you have these big benefits in the IT, how to maintain software, how to deploy it, how really to use the technology out where that is much more capable in comparison to 10 years ago, 20 years ago, right? And for that, the virtual PLC can really leverage this because you just integrate it into the IT infrastructure and you can use these kind of benefits with the IT infrastructure. This is definitely a benefit. And for sure, there are other topics like really using the data out of the PLC much more easily. You, know, you have to directly integrate it. Um, you can also think about, for example, if you are building a machine today, you can think about maybe I will adapt my business model. Even this is possible if you are in a pure virtual environment, for example. Yeah, No fixed costs or fixed designs that will stay for 10 years. No, you can adapt it because it's virtual. Very good. But then that also makes me wonder what this all means for hardware-based PLCs. Does that mean they'll be replaced by these virtual PLCs? We at Siemens believe that hardware controllers and virtual controllers will coexist because they have different advantages and they complement each other. So let me dive into a small comparison. If we look at hardware contro controllers, they are extremely robust. They are very reliable. They can be used for many, many years. They have a, an extremely high real-time capability. So they are really perfect for our typical customers as of today. Now, looking into more flexible production or production sites that are short time expanding or uh, adapting their production, this is where virtual PLCs have huge advantages, where they open up new potential for our customers. So what happens practically, a virtual PLC decouples the controller software from the hardware, and it can be operated on 
uh, industrial PCs, virtual server platforms or industrial edge platforms. So it can help our users to focus on scaling and optimizing their automation applications. So what they typically want is to increase their productivity, the utilization, increase safety, and all this can be done without depending on specific hardware. So these are the advantages. And as you see, it's very, very complementary. And um, therefore, in the future, we just open up more potential for our users, for our customers by introducing virtual PLCs. Great answer. I like the idea of complementary. Until now, our conversation has been more or less theoretical, and it would be interesting to hear about some use cases where customers would benefit from a virtual PLC yeah, Alex, let me share one of the examples I'm excited of. I always call it the Sunday night case. Let's think of an automation engineer for maintenance. So let's call her Lisa, for example. Yeah, So Lisa is sitting on Sunday night in the living room on the couch, yeah, relaxing, and she's receiving a call in the factory, a PLC, for example, power supplies broke. So she has to replace something. Yeah, So she maybe... In usual times, she has to go now to the factory. Yeah? As you can remember, with the labor shortages, maybe she's not responsible just for a factory around the corner, but maybe more far away. And for that, now it's really a challenge how to do this very quickly. And I'm thinking in the virtual environment of a case where Lisa just opens her notebook. She's going to a place, maybe a marketplace, and she's receiving a PLC application. She's deploying that application directly to the factory where the other PLC is broken. She's just using a standard engineering tool she uses for the hardware PLC, like the TA portal, for example, just to deploy the project of the broken PLC, just to the configuration, do a test with the same environment, and everything is running without leaving the living room. That's what I'm thinking of. And I mean, this is just one example. If you think about the different areas where our customers have right now really challenges when it comes to cost reduction, for example, to more flexibility, to scalability, or like maintainability, like Lisa, for example, has. These are typical examples from my point of view. Oliver, you mentioned that Lisa would be going to a marketplace to get this virtual PLC. Perhaps you can tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, this marketplace is uh, what you know already from your daily life from the smartphone. Yeah, It's like an app store where you can just select the application and where you don't have to talk to somebody. You just click on it and it will automatically be deployed on your device if you like to. So it will be done immediately in exactly in the same moment. And the good thing is this infrastructure is already in place for other applications today. Is there a timeline for these virtual PLCs? When will customers like Lisa be able to download them in this marketplace? We at Siemens are working on use cases, and I can tell you it will not take years. Beyond developing the virtual PLC, we are connecting it to the industrial edge. Change will not come overnight. Um, and as we discussed beforehand, the world of hardware PLCs will continue existing and will be supplemented by the new possibilities we have with the virtual PLC. Very good. So it's somehow on the horizon. We're nearing the end, and I'd like to return briefly to a topic that we already touched on, and that was IT-OT convergence. And in IT, we're seeing more and more as a service models, and the idea is that you pay only for what you need. So what about control as a service? Do you think that's something we'll be seeing someday? Definitely the IT technology is changing already today and will change in future the way we do business. I can think of several examples where me as a user, I only need a large number of PLCs for a limited amount of time, for example, for testing purposes. And then I would only like to pay for that period of time. So definitely this will come and a subscription model in that case would make sense. However, as always, it's the details of the actual implementation that are tough and it's these as a service models are very attractive, but they require a lot of adjustments to the purchasing and ordering processes on our customer side, but also on our side. So 
I said that IT technology has already changed our business models. And we have one concrete example with our industrial edge platform, which is already as of today sold via a subscription model. So we will continue introducing these new business models and building up uh, partnerships and enhancing our ecosystems with these new business models. My last question is for you, Oliver. And I'm going to take, again, that position of a factory operator. Let's go back to Lisa. What can Lisa do now to start getting ready for virtual PLCs? I would highly recommend Lisa get familiar with edge computing for the shop floor, like, for example, Siemens Industrial Edge. Check out the use cases that are already available, the applications that are already available. Let's also go into details when it comes to use cases with the PLC and edge computing today. The applications that are already available to integrate data layer, to create transparency, for example. We have also very good experience when it comes to how to optimize, for example, the cadence of your production line with edge computing and the existing PLCs, the hardware PLCs. Um, this is what Lisa can already do because for Lisa and the industry, the PLC will remain the core of the industrial automation, whether in the real or the virtual world. Thank you, Efrosini, and thank you, Oliver, for taking time to speak with me. To our listeners, if we've piqued your interest and you'd like to learn more about the magical world of PLCs, then visit Siemens.com slash controller. You can also check out Siemens.com slash accelerator for more information on IoT-enabled hardware and software. This is Talking Digital Industries Deep Dive. My name is Alex Chavez. Do join us again soon. Thank you.